Hi everyone, I'm Mary Ellen with Headwaters Science Institute and it's Thursday Science Challenge. Today we're going to move from water insects to land insects. Terrestrial insects are used by scientists to determine ecosystem health and biodiversity. They are present in every habitat on this earth including the Antarctic where they're the largest terrestrial animal at 0.5 centimeters long which would be the wingless midge. They are pollinators and decomposers and biological control agents and the class Insecta makes up 90% of the species on the earth. The success of these little guys is due to their size. They're easy to hide, they don't take much energy to sustain, they have a tough exoskeleton and sometimes they have wings to increase their mobility. Because insects are everywhere, they're really easy to study. And I'm gonna show you a very simple tool to make called an insect pitfall trap. All you need are some plastic cups, some cardboard, and some nails or screws. So what kind of questions could you ask about your insects at your house? You could ask if they are attracted to a certain color or not, or if they like sugar or salt flavors, where they attracted to either of those. You could see if they're attracted to sun or shady areas, or if they change over the seasons. So for my insects, I am going to ask if I get more insect activity in the evening, in the, at nighttime, or during the day. I'm going to predict that I'm gonna find more insects at night because I think they're gonna like the cooler temperatures and the dark hides them from predators. So, I'm gonna show you how to make a pitfall trap. I'm gonna take my two cups, and I'll tell you in a minute why I need two. And I'm gonna poke a hole with my nail or my screw in the bottom because we don't want water to collect in the bottom of the cup. That's because we're trying to avoid drowning the insects. So I'm gonna put holes in the bottom of my cup and then I'm going to bury two cups because I'm going to do a couple surveys and this way when I'm when I find my insects I can just take one cup out and the other one will still be there. Then the other thing you need to make is a small piece of cardboard and take four screws or nails and just poke them through the corners like this because it's just going to stand like a little tent over the cup. So I'm going to put my last screw in here, and now I have a cover for my test. I picked a place that's pretty undisturbed, so you need some sort of digging tool. And I'm going to take away the pine needles, which is going to be interesting because there's probably a lot of bugs climbing in these needles. So this will be a good test. There's a lot of pine needle duff, so I've got to get down to the surface of the dirt. Wow, there's a lot. Then you need to dig a hole the depth of your cup, because your cup is going to sit flush with the dirt. I've dug a hole that's just deep enough for my cup. So I have two cups that have holes in it, and I'm going to sink it into the hole and push the dirt right up to the edge of the cup. This way, when the insects walk by, they fall into the cup and they're not able to get out. It doesn't matter if you have a little dirt in there because that won't bother the insects. So you want to make sure the dirt is flush with the edge of the cup, because if it's below the cup, they won't be able to get in. Then, this is a cover for the opening. So this will give some shade to the insects and also keep the predators from grabbing them. So now you just put your cardboard thing on top. There's space underneath there so the insects can get in. It's eight o'clock right now at night, so I am going to leave this, up and t leave this out until eight o'clock tomorrow morning and then I'll come and see what I found. I've got my second cup in the dirt. I picked a place that didn't have quite as many pine needles around it, so we're gonna see if that makes a difference. I've got the dirt right up to the edge of the cup, 
and now I'm going to put my lid over the top. So I'm going to take the first cup out and leave the second cup in there for my daytime test. I'm not seeing very many bugs in this one. Hmm. This one's in the shade. And my second one is in the sun. So let's go take... Oh, there's an ant. Remember, insects have six legs and spiders have eight. But we're going to record them all. Oh, I see more things moving. Let's check this out. I'm going to leave my other cup in there. It's really important to check your cups every couple hours or at the minimum every 12 hours because these guys will not last long in here and we definitely don't want to kill them. Looks like I have a lot of ants. One, two, I'm going to count them. Oh, and a couple little, oh yeah, there's more in here. I'm going to count what I've got and put it into my data sheet. It's very important we don't kill our insects. I just read a startling statistic that 40% of the insect species on our planet are threatened by extinction. And they're such an important part of our ecosystem. We want to make sure we don't kill any that we find. A lot of uh, the decrease in insects is due to habitat reduction and climate change and pesticides. I emptied out that cup and now I'm going to leave it for one more day test. We'll see what happens. So it looks like zero bugs for trap one. I'll put it out for one more test tonight. Looks like we have two spiders in there. One's even starting to build a web. So I'm going to record those, set them free, and do another test tonight. Another zero. Nothing is crawling around in my hand. There was one tiny little one, I'll count, that jumped out of my hand. I saw one small ant underneath the pine needle. So I'm going to count one ant on this one. This is what my data sheet looked like when I was observing for the three days, but then I brought it inside because I wanted to see what it would look like on a graph. So my first graph, I'm comparing how many insects I found during the day versus the night. And then my second graph, I wanted to compare the types of insects. Because I, I observed spiders, I put them into the graph as well. Well, my numbers supported my hypothesis, but I think there's something bigger going on here. I didn't find that many insects, and I didn't find very many different species. So I think that perhaps the temperature was having a big effect on my insect numbers. So that's going to be a great new question that I can start investigating. I have been doing some current reading on insects, and it's disturbing that our insect numbers are diminishing. But I did find out that there are things that we can do. The first thing we can do is put away the insect spray and the bug spray and the pesticides. Those are indiscriminate killers of all things tiny and small. Another interesting one is turning off outside lights at night because that disturbs nocturnal insects patterns. And you know that when you go out and see moths all over the place when your lights are on. Keeping native plants in your yard is another great way to increase insect numbers. And anything that you can do to reduce your carbon 
your carbon footprint helps large creatures and the small little insects. I've really enjoyed getting down into the earth and finding these little guys and it makes me much more aware of all these tiny little creatures. So see what you can come up with in your yard and if you get some photos please share them with, with us. We love to see them. Good luck and don't step on any bugs. See you next week.